Hello and welcome back to another video. This video is about biology paper 6 alternative to practicum. We discuss a lot of things including food tests, we discuss magnification, how to do graphs, and especially we focused on how to do the planning question in detail. Let's get started. Before moving on, I want you all to please subscribe to this channel since 94% of you haven't subscribed. Okay, let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to study is biology food test. You will be asked to write down the food test. You can be asked to identify the change in positive or negative. So it's very important to know it very well. So for the first one is going to be reducing sugar or glucose. This is for liquid samples. If you have a solid sample, you need to crush it, mix it up with water and then add that in your in your test tube. Okay, so once you have your, sample, your food sample in a test tube, add Benedict solution into the food sample. Then you're supposed to boil it in a water bath for five minutes. A water bath uh, means that there is going to be a heat source, but uh, there's some water around it, so it doesn't. It's not directly in contact with the heat. Then, after heating it in f for five minutes, take out the test tube and observe the color change. If you notice that the color has changed from blue to blue to orange to brick red, that's a positive uh, result. This means there was reducing sugar present. One example of reducing sugar is glucose. Now, one thing to note is that more the concentration of glucose, more the color change. If glucose was in very low concentration, it might only change to orange. If there was more uh, concentration, it was brick red. It could even be somewhere in between. If it's negative, it remains blue. There is no color change. Now, uh, since we're, we're dealing with heat, we need to have some safety measures. Wear safety goggles. When you're doing the test, use heat proof gloves when you're handling this a test tube and also use tongs when you're holding the test tube tongs is basically a tool to hold uh, test tubes okay so that's a test for reducing sugar now second we have protein uh, to carry out the test for protein add your sample in a test tube add few drops of beer solution if it's positive the color changes from blue to purple otherwise it remains blue next what about lipids? If you have lipids, add your sample in a test tube, add 2 cm cube of ethanol, and then shake. Why do we shake? We, uh, shaking helps to dissolve the lipids in ethanol. Then, then uh, add 2 cm cube of distilled water. If it was positive, the clear solution turns cloudy, otherwise it remains clear. There is no um, change. Next we have starch carry out the test for starch again add your sample um, now for starch you can either uh, uh, carry out the test directly on the solid or it, it, if it's liquid you can do it in a test tube add iodine solution and then observe the color change if it was negative it would remain orange brown otherwise orange brown would turn to a blue black solution and then we have a vitamin c add one centimeter cube of cube of dcpip solution in your test tube this one then add your food sample in a solution form, okay? It should be a liquid. Mix it up uh, with the vitamins, uh, with your DCPIP. If it was positive, the blue color of DCPIP would fade and it will become colorless. If it's negative, it will remain blue. So these are your food tests um, that you're supposed to learn. And now we will discuss indicators. So what are indicators? Indicators are used to... Um, identify the presence or absence of something they can also be used to uh, see the change or concentration of something now if you have a food test and you have to identify the presence or absence of a particular substance in the food you will carry out the food test which are mentioned above for example if you're doing for a starch presence of starch you will do iodine if it's positive it means starch is present if there is no color change it means starch is absent and so on now, it can also be used to measure pH or identify changes in pH. For example, if you're analyzing some soil or water samples, if you have some solutions and you want to measure the pH, there are different ways to do that. You can uh, use a litmus paper. Litmus paper turns red in acidic solutions uh, from blue to red, and in alkaline solutions, it turns from red to blue. Now, phenaltonin can also be used. Um, it's used a lot in titration experiments. It remains colorless in acidic medium, but in alkaline medium, it turns pink. 
Now finally we have something else, a hydrogen carbonate indicator. It's used in a lot of photosynthesis or respiration experiments because these experiments release carbon dioxide. And a change in carbon dioxide, we can observe a change. Originally it's red and if there is no change in carbon dioxide, it remains red. As carbon dioxide increases with respiration, there is more carbon dioxide. When there's more carbon dioxide, it becomes more acidic because carbon dioxide is an acidic gas and the color changes to yellow. On the other hand, if uh, carbon dioxide reduces, for example, it shows that photosynthesis is occurring, um, carbon dioxide reduces, so pH increases and the color changes from red to purple. Now we uh, now a lot of questions involve magnification as well. So um, to learn the formula, you can learn this uh, thing. I equals to AM. I am. Image size equals to actual size multiplied by magnification. For magnification, don't write centimeter and meter. It's always going to be multiplied by, okay? Times 400, for example. What about actual? Actual and image should have the same size. For example, if this is 2 micrometer, the image size will also be in micrometers. So here we have 800 micrometers. Always make sure that you have uniform units. Remember, 1 meter equals to 100 centimeter. 1 meter equals to 1 times 10 power 6 micrometer. 1 meter equals to 1 times 10 power 9 nanometer. Um, the first one can also be written as 1 times 10 power 2 centimeters. Uh, learn them and also learn how to convert from one unit to another when you're writing your final answer Don't forget to write the unit as well next uh, some tips for drawing question uh, First thing always have a clear unbroken line don't have feathery lines like these that is going to uh, You will lose your marks. So if this is your shape Don't draw it something like this. Okay Secondly, it's important that your size cover at least more than 50% of the page. For example, if this is a, a leaf that you're, you're supposed to draw, make sure that your drawing covers at least more than 50% of the page. If it doesn't cover more than 50%, you, you might lose mark. Okay, and then identify the main features of, your, of the image here and uh, draw it like that. Don't overthink, just try to focus on the main features and cover that. Next, next we'll discuss some planning questions. Now remember, uh, when you're writing a planning question, it's usually for six marks. Even if you don't know the method, you can follow this, um, th these steps and you will be able to secure a lot of marks. The first step is independent variable, then dependent variable, and then the control variables. Then write down your method, how to, how to improve the accuracy, and finally some safety methods. Okay, so let's start with the independent variable. What is an independent variable? Independent variable depends on you. It's something you are changing, okay? So you have to read the question, identify what is the independent variable for that particular question. For example, if the question says, we're identifying how temperature affects surface area of the leaves. So for us, the, um, the temperature is going to be the independent variable. And what's a dependent variable for us in this question? It's going to be the surface area of the leaves. This is something you are measuring and it depends on the independent variable. Then you have something called a control variable. Mention three to four or as much as you can find out. Write your control variables. Control variables are other variables uh, that are going to be kept constant during the experiment. You are changing the independent variable. Dependent variable is being changed because of that, but control variable remains constant during the experiment. Now, what are some examples of independent variables that you can be changing? You can be changing um, the light intensity, for example. Now, when you mention um, a variable, you have to write down either here or in the method, how are you going to be changing your, in, uh, your variable? Okay, so if you, are, if you have light intensity, how will you change it? Maybe if you have your object here, you can um, measure the distance of your light source. For second one, you can change the distance between object and light source, and that will change the light intensity. So another way to increase the light intensity is to, this is your object, keep, uh, have at a distance D, keep your lamp. For the second one, for the same uh, distance, increase the power of lamp. 
and then again increase the power of lamp even more uh, that is going to change your light intensity but make sure to keep the distance same so the dist distance here would be the control variable for this example you can change the temperature how are you going to change the temperature use a water bath then you can ha have different test tubes or different samples at different temperature if you use a water bath you can change your ph how are you going to change your ph use a buffer solution a buffer solution is used to ma maintain uh, your test tubes at different ph if you want to have a different test tube with different ph add a different buffer solution with different ph this could be two three four and so on now some examples of dependent variable again it could be temperature you could be measuring the temperature so you will use a thermometer or you could be measuring time for example if the, the experiment asks you how temperature affects the rate of reaction for example so you're going to measure time you might need a stop clock remember when you uh, when you're doing something like that always measure at regular intervals for example every every one minute okay next you can also be asked to measure the volume of something for example you can be asked to measure the volume uh, after osmosis how did the size of potatoes increase or decrease you can measure volume of gas for example um volume of oxygen or carbon dioxide produced how are you going to measure volume of gas use a gas cylinder or you can use a, a syringe now what are some controls of variables that you will keep constant during the experiment when you are changing two variables the third one would be kept constant you can make sure that the temperature is same you can also make sure that um for example if you're doing osmosis experiment of potato the initial length of potato or or your substance should be same uh, if you're doing plants use same species you can make sure that the ph of solutions is same sometimes the concentration of acid or base concentration of solution should be uh, kept constant even the volume sometimes volume of solution and there are so many more examples now initial length or you can also write volume of the potato it's actually better to write volume of a potato strip for example now in the method so uh, when you identify your variables then you will identify you will write down the method so always remember to have at least two or more samples on which you will experiment if you have less than um two that is not okay so you can have like five or six right now how do you increase to six the accuracy and do you your can experiment write this step for almost every experiment actually for every experiment repeat the experiment at least two more times so you have three trials okay and then find average want to write more um, you can write accordingly for example if you're doing a syringe or something like that make sure there are no air bubbles I recommend that you definitely write this one repeat the experiment at least two or more times then for safety measures you can have um, a lot of safety measures depending on the experiment for example if you are dealing with knife make sure to keep your knife away from you and if you are dealing with heat for example if you're dealing with heat wear heat resistant gloves or uh, if you're holding um test tubes and putting them in water bath use tongs for example when you're doing the test for reducing sugar and one more thing if you're dealing again if you're dealing with some chemicals and uh, you can wear a lab coat uh wear goggles also um wear gloves to protect yourself all right so this is how you can write your say your planning question now what about graphs and uh, some table tips always remember on the x-axis you have the independent variable this is the variable that you are changing on the y-axis you have the dependent variable this is what you are measuring and this changes based on the independent variable so Always make sure that you cover at least more than 50% of the graph from both X side and Y side. And don't forget to write your units and label it. For example, if if this is temperature, make sure to write down the unit. Is it um, 
Celsius, is it Kelvin, whatever that is. On the other side, also don't forget to write your units. Uh, now, if you are asked to do a bar chart, so make sure that your bar have equal width. You can't have um, bars like this. Some of them are wider than the other. That's not okay. Okay, make sure all of the bars have equal uh, width. And secondly, when you're drawing bars, make sure that you have equal width between them. Okay, this, for example, this is two centimeter. This should also be two centimeter, or maybe like two units, two blocks, two blocks. Okay, make sure to, to draw it accurately. What if you have three variables? For example, if your bars are something like this. Now here you have height and here you have age and here you have male and female, male and female. So you can uh, write down a key here, male is going to be plain and female is going to have these lines. So you can do something like this. You can even write male and female up and on the x-axis you can write 0 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 12 for example it depends on your table okay so you can even have your bar chart something like this now what about tables for example if you have two two columns the first one is going to be the independent variable second one is going to be the dependent variable now a lot of people forget to write down the units write down your quantity and as well as the unit for example micrometer time per hour don't forget your units that's very important fill in your values accordingly so that's all about graph and table tips and finally these are some common calculations that you should know if you're asked to find the percentage increase and decrease remember the formula for increase first is going to be change in value divided by smaller value times 100 for percentage decrease again change in value that means bigger number minus smaller number divided by the bigger value or larger value multiply that by 100 that is going to uh, give you the change now estimating value so if they ask, if they tell you that yellow is one percent green is two percent blue is three percent and they ask you to find the percentage for yellow green how will you do that so yellow green that means it's somewhere here the percentage will also be somewhere here so one and two you can say it's going to be 1.5 percentage if you, uh, you can uh, uh, see it because uh, between one and two we have 1.5 but if you want to calculate it you're going to add one plus two because these are the two numbers that you have and you want to find the middle number so divide this by two this is going to be 1.5 percentage so that's how you calculate it now calculating unknown value of concentration okay so in this example i gave some um some numbers these are some random numbers okay so if the if i say that percentage glucose is one when volume of glucose is 50 and volume of water is 100 percentage glucose is two when volume of glucose is 100 volume of water is 50. so when the percentage glucose is three what is the volume of glucose and volume of water now we can do cross multiplication but notice uh, cross multiplication in as a ratio method would be when they're directly proportional so as you can see when percentage glucose is increasing the volume of glucose is increasing so we can do cross multiplication 2 to 100 3 to x this will give you x equals to 300 divided by 2 which equals to 150 so here you're going to add 150 now you cannot do this uh, cross multiplication in this way with volume of water because they are not directly proportional they are inversely proportional so you don't do it that way but how will you find the volume of water so if you add this the uh, is going to be 150 add this is going to be 150 what about this one here you will write zero the volume the total volume is constant so you get 150 in all of them that's how you find the unknown value now you might be asked to find average as well to find the average take these numbers and add all of them and then divide it by how many numbers you have so you have one two three four five six divide that this by six and you will get the average or the mean and these are some common calculations that you may face in paper six